Good evening, traders. It is Wednesday, October 30th. We are about two hours after the close. We had the FOMC statement today. We had earnings from Apple after the close, and we had earnings from Facebook after the close. So lots to cover. Let's take a look at what the market's doing. We had the S&P challenging this double top formation this week. You can see how it did break through. Wasn't able to get much of anything going. Today we had that FOMC statement and we finished with a bullish hammer. Eh, I love bullish hammers, but I love them down on the low end of the range right like that because that signals a reversal. Today we had a little bit of reluctant buying coming in after the press conference from the FOMC. Basically, the statement was kind of hawkish. They said we're really happy with where we're at right now. We see economic conditions as being very stable. We don't think there's need for further action given the current conditions. We have some uncertainty removed from the marketplace. Looks like we're going to have a truce, a trade truce with China. That's good news. Looks like Brexit, Brexit's going to be resolved with an agreement. That's good news. So all this uncertainty is giving the Fed some breathing room. So they're probably not going to do anything. The market's addicted to easy money. It likes that, but it's not going to get any more help from the Fed. Now, on the bearish side of things, we've got stocks trading at the upper end of their valuation range and we had Facebook and Apple both post good earnings today but both stocks have had kind of a muted reaction we had Amazon traded lower after the number a week ago Netflix sold off after the number Google sold off after the number so not really great reaction out of stocks asset managers are not overly anxious to chase stocks up at this level right now but what are you going to do with your money You've got interest rates at historic lows. You got to go into equities. So I believe that the muted reaction to the FOMC statement, which by the way, I was really hoping for a nice drop, but everybody was kind of forecasting that the Fed would be more hawkish than they would like and that the market might dip afterwards. The more people that feel that way, the less likely we are to get that dip. We might get a little bit of fear of missing out complex in here as asset managers get ready for the year end. They might feel like they need to be more allocated because they really haven't been. So we could get a little bit of chasing up in, in here. I'm pretty neutral. I think that the market floats higher on very, very light volume. Look at this anemic volume during the last month. This is bad. September and October are traditionally busy months, lots of volume lots of news and we're not getting any of it so in my opinion i think the market gradually drifts higher but at any moment you could get wham one of these long red candles especially if we keep floating 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 higher it attracts a lot of bullish speculators they get in on the breakout they ride it higher and then the first whiff of bad news they get flushed out it closes this gap and then you get follow through selling on the backside. That type of heavy selling could push us down to the 100 day moving average in a matter of a day or two. Look at this. See this nice, beautiful rally, little choppy, floating higher, floating higher. Everything looks good. Uh oh. Look at the volume. Very, very light. Wham! 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 Right down to the 100 day moving average. You go from four weeks of constructive, beautiful price action to taking everything away in three days. We need to be very careful here. So I do not want to overreach. Now, mind you, a lot of the things that caused this type of selling were related to US China trade negotiations and Brexit. So those issues look like they've been resolved so we should not see that big type of volatility the market tends to have a good bid into year-end as well so well, what do we do with this information we needed that market pullback we're going to have a mixed bag i'm going to be looking for stocks that we can sell some bullish put spreads on after earnings and we're going to be looking for stocks where we can sell some bearish call spreads so the market's going to be drifting, drifting, drifting higher. 
the stocks that we're going to be selling these call spreads on, we need to see relative weakness. We need to see those stocks dragged higher by their hair and barely inching higher. That's how we know there's lots of resistance and that they won't move higher. On the flip side, the bullish stocks, we need to see that they are leading the charge and moving higher. So let's take a look at what we've got. Before I get started, I'd like to mention for those of you that are watching this video on YouTube, you're seeing it a few days late. This is a video that I produce for Option Stalker members. We go through, I show you how to use the platform, how to conduct searches, the searches that are most effective for this current market condition. Then we highlight the stocks, we put together a game plan. Everything that you see tonight is available on Option Stalker. And I also do the daily videos. Again, YouTube watchers, please subscribe to this channel. I post that daily video an hour after the open. It's got lots of actionable stock trades. All of those ideas also come from Option Stalker. So let's get started. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. Post some remarks. I'll try and reply. And let's see what we've got this week. I always like to start off with my previous picks. So if you're watching these videos again on YouTube, take a look at how the picks did. Because I start the videos off with this track record you'll get a feel for how accurate we are. We have a systematic approach that works. AMTD was on our bullish list. We love this little breakout here. The reaction after the earnings announcement was good. This was our support level. We're going to be selling out of the money bullish put spreads using that as our stop. That's a money maker. ASML, we like that stock. This is where the recording came out. Stock has been moving higher. We were going to use this breakout right here. 252 as our stop point. That's also where our short strike price is going to be on the put spreads. That's a winner. Boeing. Deep, deep drop on Boeing. We're waiting for the stock to rally and we would like to sell a bearish call spread at that 100 day moving average. I believe the stock's going to have a lid on it. So, yes, I like that in range right now, but we didn't get a market pullback, so you should not have been entering that trade. You should have been waiting. So I would continue to wait with the market starting to lift off. We want to see relative weakness. Well, how do we do that? We click on M5. I'm going to overlay the 1 OSI indicator. We're going to take a look at what the stock did on a five-minute basis. It's below zero. It's negative. It's, if it's above zero, it's bullish. Lots of time spent below the zero line. So the stock is weak relative to the market. We'll go back to the daily. Lots of relative weakness in here. So this is going to be a good bearish call spread to sell keying off of that 100 day moving average. Let's see if it can go just a little bit higher with this market rally. If it can't, then we know we've got a really good candidate for it. We can focus on that strike price right there. BBBY, beautiful, leveraging off of this 200-day moving average. That's where the video came out. That's a winner. CAR, leaning on this right here. There's where the video came out. Stock is still hovering right around that 100-day moving average. Time decay over the course of the week should be a winner. CCK, beautiful. Got that breakout right there. That was our short strike around that $68 level. Boom, boom, boom. Really nice. Coca-Cola, one of our bearish stocks. We we're looking for the stock to penetrate that 100-day moving average, and then we would have been selling a call spread above it. Had the earnings and out reaction right there. Stock was pulling back. So I'd say I'm pretty neutral on the stock. I would not try and do anything with Coca-Cola in here. It is right on that 100-day moving average. KSU, we liked it. Stock came out, gapped higher. Now it's trying to pull back and find that support. This 140 level is going to be support for the stock. That's where I like to sell the bullish put spread. And right now, we're uh, the goal was to get halfway down this long green bar. Well, we're there right now, so I like this bullish put spread using that 140 strike. If we penetrate 140, we're going to fill in, and you need to close her down. 
but this is very very normal the stock just gets ahead of itself after a huge breakout we've got this beautiful compression here big breakout big volume pulling back get a little profit taking in here we want to see that stock test the support and then we want to see it start lifting off of that support we want to make sure that it's holding as soon as we know that it's holding and we get a couple of bullish bars after it time to sell sell that bullish put spread Netflix gapped up on the news pulled back hard we were looking to be able to sell a bearish call spread right at this level in here well that's where we are right now however stocks actually looking pretty good right now it's really recovered nicely and part of that might be the market rallying so I would wait to see because if this stock continues to move higher it's filling in this gap right in here it could actually turn out to be a nice bullish pick we've got a low we have a higher low tiny little cup and handle here with a horizontal resistance line around the $300 level you could use this as your support to sell that bullish call spread so my opinion of the stock has flipped on this one and we weren't doing any bearish trades ahead of the FOMC statement in fact my mandate last week was we really should be keeping our trades small we had some bullish put spreads on over the last few weeks we've done really well on those manage profits try and reel those bullish put spreads in for pennies if you can let's hope for that FOMC pull back let's see if we can reload our bullish put spreads that's the mode that we were in for the whole week so we really weren't looking to uh, sell a lot of bearish call spreads we wanted that news to come out so we've got the news right now it looks like the market's going to float higher and as the market was going higher we were really focused on bullish put spreads really nice PBR we like this cup and handle formation we like that breakout on the 200 day moving average very nice that's a winner PM hugging that 200 day moving average that's a nice one we got a works worth of weeks worth of time decay so that's good snap was another bearish pick of ours and here you can see the reaction we had this long red candle and this drop down to the 200 day moving average again not doing any bearish call spreads this may or may not turn out to be a good resistance level for level for the stock the fact that it bounced off of this 200 day moving average with a bullish hammer and some really nice long green candles tells me that the stock is probably going to challenge this 100 day moving average and it might even get above it if it can might be time to flip gears on that one and to look more towards selling a bullish put spread but not my favorite stock didn't like the earnings reaction we have much better so this is the type of earnings reaction that we like Snapple has reversed course and it looks better we love this downtrend line that was broken here on that earnings announcement we've been in UNH for a number of days you've seen it in the daily videos time after time because it's so dang good so we were selling right at this 200 day moving average last week we loved it that's a big winner love UNH so we had a number of bullish put spreads that we were selling last week they were all in great shape we had the market moving higher there's no reason to do any bearish call spreads so the ones that we had out there the character of the move has changed a little bit so that's why we have to get the market right that's why you have to position ourselves based on what the market's doing so for this week I would not go calling a market top that's how you lose a lot of money is by calling market tops and if you zero out zoom out excuse me and you see this formation here that's a giant cup and handle with a breakout right in here if I click the minus sign you might be able to see it a little bit easier but yeah that's looking pretty good right there so we've got to focus on the bullish side so let's take a look at some stocks I'll show you how I found them my first inclination is always to go to the canned searches and I'm going to go into bullish and we're going to take a look at after earnings GE GE has been a real dog for a very long period of time 
and lots of credit concerns pretty choppy not a lot of pace to it i do like this breakout in here so that's really nice but i don't think i would be selling a bullish put spread using those major moving averages right there stock has been just too choppy will it go higher yes it certainly could if it pulled all the way back and then we started to see it lift off again from these moving averages okay then i might consider it but i really want to see this bid tested so nothing too exciting there i'm going to go into heavy buying bynd nasty reaction to earnings sold off looks like it's going to bounce in here i certainly would not be selling any bullish put spreads on that one CRM I like it see this visual downward sloping trend line we've got a move up above that 200 day moving average yeah I think we can key on that CRM is definitely one of the bullish stocks that I like this week sell that bullish put spread right below that 200 day moving average and it's still got some upside so this stock is not run away from us wouldn't touch that I've already clicked through these, so I'm not going to uh, go in and, and rehash that. Zenga, $6 stock, not too interested in that. Relative strength, looking at that. Uh, I'm going to go into Pop Bull. Wow, look at all these candidates for Pop Bull. How the heck can I weed through all of that? Well, let's see which ones are on a buy signal to start with. There's CRM and GE right at the top of the list. CVS. That one's a little bit high. We've been trading CVS. We like that one. But I think it's a little too far out of the gate. EFTC, ETFC, E-Trade, we also have been trading from this low right in here. That was fantastic. But I think that's run its course. So uh, we're going to go in and use a little bit different filter. Let's see which ones are on a buy from a H2 basis. We tried selling a J&J bullish put spread that was our only loser last week out of I think eight or nine trades and so here it is bouncing right back above that was a nasty nasty day I'm not going to touch this stock lesson learned on that one so we'll go into one more filter here we'll put the h1 filter on still lots and lots of candidates but I see one at the top that definitely made the list and I went through and I looked through all these stocks and that's a nice move and that's a nice move and that's a really good breakout so we have a double bottom higher low very very good UIS is the symbol again it's not a very expensive stock but right around this nine dollar level that's where that 200 day moving average is any pullback on this stock you can sell that bullish put spread right there using that breakout horizontal breakout and that 100 day moving average to lean on now when I talk about the types of stocks that I look at this is a classic example look at this nice move higher very orderly price pattern and then we get into this the selling mode beautiful beautiful nice tight price action beautiful bounce more selling nice rally very very orderly price action and a stock like this you can use trend lines to tell you when the momentum is shifting so you draw your trend lines here comes up draw your trend lines here time to get short draw your trend lines here time to get long draw your trend lines here and as long as that lower trend line is maintained then the stock should continue to perform well and go your way as soon as it violates that lower trend line boom you're out and we have trend lines that we can use so if i wanted to manage this trade i'm going to click gtc and let's pick on this candle because we can draw a nice line to there and there's our trend line it'll continue to follow the stock higher and higher eventually it'll break that trend line when it does we know we have to get out of the trade that's how you can manage these trades on a swing basis and you don't have to watch them all the time my advice to you though is give it a little room meaning that if you draw this line too tight the stock doesn't have any room to move around and you'll be stopped out right away so in this case you're going to have plenty of time for the stock to keep moving higher and that slope will eventually catch up to it so great way to manage trades that's how i manage a lot of my day trades for entry and exit so let's say this is a five minute chart 
I see the stock dropping and I think there's a, a bounce that's coming. I'll start drawing my line down like this. Boom, that uh, downward trend line is broken. I'm in. I see that. Now I start drawing my uptrend line. It comes in here, rides the stock higher. Boom, I'm out right here. So very, very effective tool to use. Alert means good for the day. GTC means good till cancel. And so if you do log off the computer, the day alerts and the GTC alerts will be remembered. So UIS was the stock that I was trying to focus on. Uh, Crocs, boy, what a nice move. Again, a nice, beautiful, orderly pattern. Love this stuff. Boom. Not going to chase it up here. I'm going to very quickly look down the list here because I know there were a couple of other stocks that I liked. There's CRM, CVS we've taken a look at, AMTD, and I saw one in, one more in here, HLF, that I liked. Nice drop, higher low, through horizontal resistance after earnings. We'd like to see this stock come back and test this Let's call it $43 price level. We get down to 43, then we'd like to try and sell around this 100 day moving average. Ideally, the stock is able to pull back a little bit more. That would be a really nice bullish put spread. I think the stock's got plenty of upside. We're going to zoom out. You can see lots of upside. Draw that trend line visually. And we're above that long term down trend line. Double bottom, higher low, through horizontal resistance, like it. H, L, F. So that's a good one. So we're going to go into the bearish side a little bit here and see what we can find here. We're going to go into week after earnings. And this is what I use to find a couple of other stocks. So now we're going to go on a D1 basis, Ford. Again, this is in the event that the market starts to completely flat line and we start breaking below the breakout, that SPY 302 level. Then we can start looking at selling some bearish call spreads. I'm going to unmark this and I'm going to go and see on an H2 basis, H1 basis. So we've got quite a few stocks in here and I'm not going to go through all the list but I will show you how I found some stocks when I do a custom search run. Pop bear, take a look at this. And there wasn't anything that really interested me. So I'm going to go into custom search and let's take a look at what that yields. First, I'm gonna go back to our normal view, get rid of the zoom feature there. And so I ran a search and I looked at stocks that had announced earnings in the last couple of weeks ran through all of those searches let me just mark a few boxes off and let's see what we find i'm going to go into trade signal we're going to be looking for a trade signal and relative strength on a daily four hour two hour basis good option liquidity and there's our list and so out of this list, I did actually find a couple of other stocks. Abbott. I like Abbott. Abbott's got this long downtrend that was just breached. If it can get above the 100-day moving average, which it poked above yesterday, I like Abbott for selling a bullish put spread. You can see how the stock came down and touched the 200-day moving average. Earnings announced. Tries to pull back a little bit. Find support above that 200-day moving average. Long green candles getting above that major moving average. There's You'd want to use that $85 level as your short strike price for the bullish put spread. You could give yourself a little breathing room and maybe go to $83 if you wanted to. That would be a higher probability play. So I definitely like Abbott. I'm going to put in another one and... This is one that everybody's aware of. It's Facebook. And if I went into pre-earnings options, I would see all of the stocks that we're announcing after the close today or before the open tomorrow. And you can see Apple, Facebook, 
MGM. All three of those actually are a little bit higher after the number. Lyft also a little bit higher after the number. But the one that I saw that caught my eye was Facebook. I like this dip, like the second dip. When it gets through this resistance level tomorrow, it's actually a, a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders. First shoulder, head, second shoulder, neckline. We should be above the neckline tomorrow. You can sell that bullish put spreader on that 100 day moving average. So I think that makes that trade makes a lot of sense. So Facebook's another one that you'll see on the list this week. These are also some decent candidates to take a look at and a very easy search to run. Trade signal, bullish, and strength versus SPY. I did come in and you, you have to get a little bit creative with uh, some of your searches because uh, there are lots of patterns that we look for and I thought well let me see if I can find any bearish engulfing patterns that would be of interest to me and so I was able to pull up a couple of candidates earlier today and I'm not getting any search results right now so uh, use the bearish engulfing pattern use the capitulations and see if you can find any searches with that Maybe it was the capitulation that showed me some stocks that look like they might be getting ready to roll over. So I'm going to take this off screen. I'll click on a couple of them. And you're just looking for stocks that might be a little bit toppy. This is a pretty big red candle off of that 200-day moving average. Nice. Yeah, ADM might be a decent candidate. ANF. Abercrombie and Fitch, you got this uptrend line right here. If you can get below the 100-day moving average, yeah, might be a good candidate. So those are the types of patterns that you're looking for, that type of exhaustion where it's up, 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 and then pulling back. But this stock has been so strong relative to the market, you can see the relative strength here, that you have to be very, very careful because this could simply be a little round of profit-taking, not a bearish movement in the underlying stock. I prefer to sell bearish call spreads on stocks that have been tanking and that are trying to rebound and that are going to hit resistance. And one of those is McDonald's. There's the announcement after the news. There's the deep selling with long red candles. There's the bounce that we're getting. You want to see that stock come up to that 200 day moving average and stall out. Especially if the market is going higher, higher, higher. You want to see that that stock cannot get through a major moving average like that. If it can't and the market starts to waver, then you know you've got a good candidate. So yes, I would be looking at McDonald's for a possible short. ALL is one that I saw. You can see the long red candle. There's your earnings announcement. It is testing that 100 day moving average. If it falls below the 100 day moving average, you can sell a bearish call spread using that 100 day moving average as your stop. Grub. Let me go back to ALL. Here's the other thing that makes this attractive. You can see lots and lots of resistance at the all time high. A lot of long candles above the body. Sign of weakness. You also have this tiny little downtrend here. So uh, stock is pretty choppy back and forth, but this is not a bad uh, short. Just have to wait for the market to show you that the rally is exhausted. But there are already signs of resistance. Grub, big drop yesterday. Stock really struggling in here. You want to watch the open right here at that $39 level. That's that. That's where your short strike price would be. You want to make sure that this stock does not rebound above that and start to fill in this gap. If it starts to grind higher, can't get through relative weakness, okay, then you can try and sell your bearish call spread right there using that strike price. Now, I'm, notice I'm not buying options right now. I just feel that the market's not going to go anywhere fast. The volume is extremely low. And time decay is going to be a major issue for anyone buying options. So we're really focusing on selling strategies where we can take advantage of this neutral environment and take advantage of time decay. 
if we had had a big market pullback on that news, the FOMC news, and the earnings from Apple and Facebook would have been very negative, uh, then we would have gotten a market pullback. Great. And we would have waited for our opportunity. We would have waited for support. We would have been call buyers at that time. Right now, you do not want to be buying option premium. This is a really nice setup for a bearish call spread. Texas Instruments, big drop. Nice breakdown below that long-term uptrend. So stocks should struggle to get through the 100-day moving average. That's one that I would watch for a bearish call spread. And Boeing we already covered. Closer we get to that 100 day, the more I like it, but need to see that relative weakness. So those are the candidates for the for this week. And just be creative with the types of searches that you run in the platform and use some of the different variables that we've got here. Bearish engulfing patterns, uh, capitulations, relative weakness, heavy volume. You know, you can go into the heavy volume search. I love this search. Now, during earnings season, you're going to get a ton of candidates because there will be some earnings results mixed in here as well. But when the market's doing nothing, you must have volume in the underlying stock. That stock is going to have to do all the heavy lifting on its own because you're not going to have a market tailwind. The daily ranges are going to be very, very compressed as it just floats higher and it will continue to float higher until we get some bad news from somewhere we don't know what it is could be trade talks breakdown who knows could be really weak economic news but for right now you just have to go with the flow and favor the long side so i'm going to highlight these stocks one more time and i'm going to go into my lists and this week, I have October 30th bull, and I got the bear ones separated out, so it'll be a little bit easier for me. I like ABT. If it can get above that 100-day moving average, want to see that relative strength continue, leverage that 100-day moving average. You got your downward sloping trend line. We're above that. That also looks good, so like that stock. <coughs> Excuse me. CRM. Same type of setup, downward sloping trend line above the 200-day, like selling that put spread right at that 200-day moving average. Facebook, nice little rally, a little bit of a head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders formation, getting through the neckline on good earnings tomorrow. Uh, well, actually, the earnings came out today after the close. That's what the A is for. And that breakout above the neckline should have follow through buying. This stock is not near its all time high, so it's got room to run. I like it. E off of that 100 day moving average. HLF. We looked at that long term, lots of room to run. Really nice movement, kind of a choppy wild stock. Let it come in a little bit about to that $43 level, then look to sell that 100 day moving average. We want that breakout to hold. So if it comes all the way back down to where the earnings announcement was, you want to start buying it back in. If you're a very uh, aggressive trader, you could wait for it to hit that 100-day moving average and break below it as well because you've got another nice little uptrend line here that you can also lean on. So multiple support levels here. I like HLF. SBUX. Good earnings after the close. You can see that it never got down to the 200-day moving average. That's Starbucks. I think you can sell a bullish put spread on Starbucks as well. You can also see this downward sloping trend line that has been breached to the upside. I think it can get back up to the 100-day moving average. UIS, nice, nice, nice breakout. Wait for a little bit of a pullback. Hopefully this low at the 933 level holds, and then you'd be able to sell right at that 100 day moving average. I think this is a really nice candidate as well. We're going to go into the bearish picks. I showed you ALL, lots of resistance up here on a bullish day. Stock backs off hard, testing that 100 day moving average. 
I think this is a good bearish call spread. Grub pounded. Like to see a little bit of a bounce, an attempt at a bounce. Do not want to see it in the gap here. If that holds and we continue to see relative weakness, I think that could be excellent for the stock as well. I, it, I think that that could be excellent for a bearish call spread is what I should say because that resistance level will hold. And I know that uh, a lot of the chains, Walmart, Target, Amazon are all starting to offer free delivery. I don't know how that plays into Grub. Don't really know their business model that well. Don't care. Just looking at what the price action is telling me right here. McDonald's. That stock gets closer to this 200-day moving average. That's a big bounce. That's a long green candle. You want to make sure that as it starts getting up to this 200-day moving average that it would show you resistance. Got a nice downward sloping trend line here. Probably comes in around the 204 level. So you want to make sure that if you're using that 200-day moving average that the market's moving higher. The stock is, that's got to be a brick wall. The stock cannot get through it. Then you know you've got a good trade. Texas Instruments, same thing. Big gap down. Want to make sure that that 100-day moving average is preserved, that the stock can't get in and fill that gap. Long-term uptrend broken. This would be a, a nice bearish call spread as well. Going to put up SPY. So here I've just outlined four bearish call spreads. Well, when should I put those on? You do not put those on until this breakout fails. And that is SPY302. If the market is above SPY302, Forget these four trades. We're not interested. Okay? No go. We got to focus on the bullish put spreads. Now, if the market starts to flatline and we get a bunch of doge eyes here sideways and, and it really is not moving much higher or lower and you start keeping an eye on these four stocks and you feel confident that the market is not going to lift off, and that these stocks have huge overhead resistance and they cannot get off the deck. Okay, if you're you know, an aggressive trader like that, I've given you the names that you want to focus. you the names that you want to focus on and if you feel that way, go ahead, sell these bearish call spreads. You certainly can do that. That way you'll be able to generate income on both sides of the market. But uh, I believe that this rally, it's just going to float higher and any bad news could just pull the rug right out from underneath us. And we could see these long candles, all the bullish speculators getting in here. All it would take is one nasty day to flush them out. We could easily test that 100-day moving average. I'm still anxious to buy a dip. I hope we get a dip. That's the only way that we're going to get any volume back into the market. Look at this tiny horrible minuscule volume we got to do much better than that in October we should be up like this this is one of the busiest times of the year so hopefully we'll start to see some price movement until then we're going to stick with selling bullish put spreads we're going to use this 302 level on the SPY we're going to lean on that breakout as long as that's intact stick with the bullish put spreads look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when I do my daily video Good luck with your trades. Have a good night.